Welcome to the Fairmont Tutorial Series. My name is Markus Scheidkin and this is part of our first set of tutorials on publishing and exploring data with Nomad. In this video I show you how to use the Nomad API to take data that you identified in our web interface and take it to your Python programs. Make sure you watch our tutorial on data exploration first. You will find a link to the video down in the description. Before we start, let's clarify what is an API. API stands for Application Programming Interface. More specifically, in the context of a web application, this is usually a REST API. Representationist data transfer or REST APIs use the HTTP protocol to retrieve and manipulate application data on a web server. Very much like a web browser gets HTML pages or posts your latest tweets, a REST API client uses simple protocol operations like GET, POST, PUT, and DELETE to manipulate server resources that are identified with URLs. Since the HTTP protocol is so ubiquitous, there are many ways to get started with a REST API. You can simply use your browser or command line tools like curl or wget or one of the many HTTP libraries like Python's request library. The challenge to use any given API usually boils down to knowing what the URLs are and how to interpret the data. Nomad offers you several helpers to approach this API. Let's first have a look at how the web-based user interface can help you. Throughout the user interface, we have placed API buttons. See, the web interface also uses Nomad's API. And behind these buttons, you find the HTTP request that Nomad just used to acquire the information you see. Here on this overview page, for example, the API buttons show me the request that was used to get the data for this entry. In this case, we have two HTTP requests. Roughly speaking, the first one gave us the data on the left column, the second one the data that's used in the cards on the right. Let's inspect the URL for the first request. The URL does not have a domain part, so it used the same nomadlab.eu domain that the web page is using. The first part of the path identifies the version 1 of the API and separates it from the other parts of the web application. Then there is the API endpoint. Entries shows us that this is about entries. The next segment appears to be some kind of ID. This is a very typical API pattern that specifies the type of a data object followed by the ID of a specific object. The response simply contains the entries data. Here Nomad returns the basic entry metadata, basically all the information that is also available in the search interface and that is shown on the left. You can compare the information in this JSON with what is rendered on the left side of the page and you will be able to find all the information here. This is a simple GET request. If you want to do this yourself, you can simply use your browser to do so. I can copy the URL and paste it into the browser window. Put nomadlab.eu in front and you get the same response right here in your browser window. Let's have a look at the second request. We are also going for entries data with the same ID, but now there is an archive and a query segment in the URL. The archive is what we call the sum of all process data for an entry, the structural hierarchical data format that we learned about in the exploring data tutorial. This time we are doing a post, and what we are posting is a query to the archive. A post request typically has a body with the data that you want to post. In this case, it's a query to the archive of the entry with the given ID. This query consists of a required part that allows us to specify the partial information that we like to have. Here the entry page asks for all the potential information it can display in the cards on the right side of the page. If we look at the response, we see first that the query is reflected back and then under data we get the partial archive. If we browse the various section, we see that it only contains what we asked for. The only additional difference is that there is a section run and we did not require a section run. Well, we asked to resolve references, so any required data in the section results that was referenced is also included in the response. In this case, the DOS energies are not part of the results, the results merely references the energy stored somewhere in the section run, and the returned section run only contains these energies. This archive query API function allows us to exactly ask for and only read and transfer the data that we want. The problem with post requests is that we cannot simply put them into our browser's URL bar. Browsers will only allow you to do an HTTP GET. So let's explore the second helper that we have to get started with the API. In the Analyze menu, we have a page on Nomad's APIs. And here we find a link to our API dashboard. The API dashboard exposed as a reference documentation to the API and also as a tool to try API requests. Here you find all the possible resources and operations you can execute, including the entries entry ID archive query. Here we can try all requests directly in the browser, copy over the entry ID and then take the query. And execute the query. 
Below you will see the response. The response contains all sorts of data, including the density of states. We can refine this and say we are only interested in the original structure and the reduced formula. We can change the query and make it more specific. Okay, let's say we like this information, but we want to have this for many entries. We want to do a search and retrieve this data for all the entries in it. How do we do that? Well, maybe the search page can help us. Let's say we want to study cubic binary systems with sodium in it. Okay, over 7000 results, that should be a nice use case. We also have an API button here. It shows us a query independent of an actual request, and then a request with response. Okay, the query seems reasonable. It is obviously containing the filters that we clicked. Let's have a look at the response. The data part is containing the actual results. It is only one page of results, so it's not loading all the 7000 results in one go. It contains some data for each entry, but not the structure information that we want to have and that we retrieved earlier from the archive. So we have some information about the search query, but we are not getting the information that we want. Let's have a look at the dashboard. We find the used URL here, entries query. Search for entries and retrieve their metadata. Okay, we want to search for entries, but we want to have the archive data. Maybe we sign something down under archive where we were before. Search entries and access the archive. That sounds like what we need. If we look at the example request body, it seems to allow us to specify a query similar to what the GUI was using. We can send a pagination object and a requires object. Okay, let's try it. Let's copy the query from the API dialog and copy the required that we were using before. Let's keep the pagination as it is. Looking at the response, it repeats the request and then we have some data. Looks similar in structure to our single entry query. There are one, two, three, four, five pieces. Okay, it's not 7K, but we got the data that we want. If you look at the request, the pagination object obviously controls how many entries we get. It says five. Theoretically, we could set this to 7000, but be advised doing this in the browser will likely cause issues when the browser tries to render all of the results. Secondly, it might take normal too long to produce all the results in one go. If we cancel the request and click on the schema tab, we can see the documentation for the pagination object. But if we want to do something with the data, it will be in Python anyways. So how do we get out of the browser and into programming? Here I prepared a little Python script. The first thing that we do is we import the request library. If you don't have the request library installed, you can simply pip install it. Then we prepare a few variables. First the URL, then the query, and then the required. These are the exact same values that we used before on the dashboard. Then we have a little loop to go through the pagination. We start with a page after value of none to retrieve the first page. In the loop, we do the actual HTTP work. We use the request library to issue post requests. The post request consists of the URL and then a body as JSON. The body consists of the query part, the required part, and the pagination. In the pagination, we basically use all the default values. The only thing that we change is the page after value. The page after value lets us determine the page based on a value. We start with the value none to retrieve the first page. After the request was executed, we can look at the response. The response objects will contain a key data with an array of all the search results. If this has a length of zero, we know that we reach the end of the pagination and we break the loop. Otherwise, we look at the pagination key to retrieve the pagination object. Here we will find the next page after value that we then assign to the page after value for the next iteration of the loop. After this, we go through all the search results. Remember, they are in the key data. In the case of a search query, the data will always be an array and we can iterate through it. For each of the elements, we will print the entry ID, look in the archive and print from the section results, the section material, the Camua formula reduced. Let's try it out. As you see, the script is retrieving the information from the API and is printing the entry IDs and the chemical formula reduced. This is one way of using our API using the request library.
To learn more about our API, please also have a look in our online documentation on Nomad's API and on our Python library. This concludes our tutorial on the Nomad API. This was obviously just a quick glance to get you started. There is much more to explore. I put all links to Nomad, the API dashboard and the API documentation down in the video description. Thank you for following this tutorial and see you in another video.